What are going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming at you today's video, which is how to build a koi farm, part four. Actually, filling the lake today. And yes, I know we tried it last time, but we're actually gonna be filling the lake. Let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack, I'm indeed The Balding Reefer, or should I say bald now? I specialise in tropical cold water pond and marine fish. This video series is all about how to build a koi farm in the UK. This is where we're up to so far. Massive algae bloom in there, but we're going to get this bad boy filled today. And we're going to force it, because apparently it doesn't like to rain in England anymore. So, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, let me show you what we're going to do. I've got shovels. I've got a fire pit, because I need to burn some of the small chocks of wood. But I've got one shovel, two shovel, three shovel. I've also got some black pipe down there. And let me take you over here and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to be doing with black pipe. Okay, so if you remember, that black pipe there feeds all the way through into my lake down there. So what we need to do is we're currently about two inches off the bottom of the water. So we're going to dig a channel out of here. Leave a trench in just there at the front. And then we're going to take the front end out, lower it down, and re backfill it all. But let's get down to the pipe and I'll snap back to you in a second. Right, progress update. We found the pipe. We now just got to chase the channel back of the pipe, but digging through solid red clay. It's very difficult, isn't it, Lampus yeah, Melardus? Especially first thing in the morning, just after breakfast. Yeah. So, we're going to keep going. We were going to do a time lapse, which is going to be pretty boring watching us struggle to dig through clay. However, we will show you it filling up, though. Um, but yeah, let's get back to digging. Okay. <coughs> so, the pipe's dug back now. We found where the flexi is, which is just in there, as you can see. What we need to do now is try and lift this pipe work out. So what we've been doing is just literally breaking it free along the edges. If you stick your, uh, your own shovel in the end, we can show me flex, mate. There you go. So we'll, uh, we'll get Rugrat hold the, hold the phone so we can actually get this out in one big piece. And, uh, Show you what the next job is. Okay, so Lampy's gonna set down the pipe. Your main man Reef is gonna pick it off. So that is the tubing out. Excuse me, Lampus. Oh, good. And he walks in the way when we red drop it on. Now what we need to do is basically lower this trench here an extra sort of two inches. So we can actually use the gradient of the water to fill the lake on up. So let's get to pulling this black one out and we'll snap back to you in a second. Okay, so we have re-dug the trench. We have just split the corrugated pipe work there just to be able to get it lodged in. What we need to do now is take out this sort of four inch height here. And then in turn, as you can see, once we drop it down, the water will then start filling into the pipe. But obviously we need to lift it back up again to be able to chop this out but first what we need to do is we need to nip back because we need to put a mesh bag on the outlet down here because what we don't want is any of the fry that are in here coming all the way down and going into my lake so let's go home let's get some drinks let's get some foods and let's get some mesh bags so we can put them over the ends i was going to say we don't want a mesh bag we want a mesh bag on this end as well don't we yeah why not we'll mesh both ends stop all debris going down it yep let's get that done right See you in a second, people. Okay, so we've got the mesh bags from Lidl. Big shout out to my main man, Dazzle Boy, that gave us the idea. But what we want to do now is basically put the mesh bag over here and then just gaffer tape it. So I will hand the camera to an Olympus Melardus. And all this is for is to no fry that are in the other lake will in turn end up in this one. Uh, let's find the end. There it is. Now we 
just run it. Stick that onto there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will stop it from coming off. We'll put a few more pieces on while we're here, eh? Give it one that way and it'll lock those on. Yeah, epic shouts, we'll do that. There we go. And now we push the, uh, the bushes back down and you'll never know. Look at that, eh? Hidden and magical. Now, let's get back up to the top and get put in this uh, overflow in. Yep. There you go. Good. Okay, so we've just literally stood the black pipe work up on this spade here. What I'm doing now is I'm just slowly trying to dig away at the front of this here. Obviously, I'm not alarmed about the water going into the trench, so to speak, at the moment. I just want to dig away as much of this as possible so we can actually get the hose in there. Oh, so we're not expecting it to absolutely barrel in by any stretch of the imagination. But we need just enough to get some flow in there. Now, if you watch this bit here, we'll be able to see if any of the wet stuff comes down, which it is. We show we're starting to come through, which is good. Obviously, a few more little fine tweaks. And then we'll take you down to the bottom and show you it coming down and slowly filling. But like I say, it's going to take three, four days to fill, but you guys will see it by the end of this video anyway. So let's get to cracking, shall we, people? Okay, so the black pipe works in now. There is a nice steady flow going down the pipe. We've got Rugrat just there through the bushes. Um, we've probably got maybe half an inch into the water now, which is decent. Thank you. Nearly fell in. So now it's just a matter of chucking all this back in that trench. Let's go, Lampers. Okay, so we've put the pipe back in. We've now chased back in uh, where the grass is, but all that will grow back in turn. Just going to try and see if I can actually get this pipe here now up over the end. Try to take that for me. Uh, Just cut to a different shot if you want. Okay, so the overflow has been a tremendous success. It's coming in a lot quicker than I thought it would do, to be fair. Obviously, it's just finding its way through the uh, the cracks in the mud and stuff like that at the moment, but it's already found its way. Oh, it's already found its way out into the middle. Obviously, we've added algae bloom, but nothing that I'm too particularly worried about. Obviously, once this is full, the wind's kissing the top of the lake and stuff like that will be absolutely fine. The polytunnel as well has stood the test of time. And we just need to get those two polys on as well. But let me snap back to in a second when a lot of this has started to fill. Okay, so you've just seen where the inflow is coming in over there. We've now got the old overflow and we've got a 110 millimeter pipe. So we now need to ram it in the hole, do the honours. So what we're going to do now is if we put it out a little bit more to about here, because what I want to do is I want to put an elbow on the bottom of it so it acts as a bit of a, uh, a bit of a surface skimmer. So at least then we can take the water right up to the edge of where the decking is and all the way down the edge on here as well. But again, we won't be able to put the overflow in properly until the water's got just below the bottom of it, so obviously we can work out where the levels are, because obviously the, the side of the bank isn't perfectly level or anything like that. But let me snap match in a second, when we're getting onto that. Okay, so it is slowly starting to fill. The only issue being is we keep having these dry and then these hot spells. So, Obviously the overflow's dried up again. 
You've already seen me at the start of this video, lower the pipe an inch below the water. However, there's a slight hump here, goes up about half an inch. So I need the water level on the top lake to go up by just over another half an inch and it'll then in turn start slowly dribbling out of here. Come winter, we're not going to have a problem. However, for the time being, I need to get this bad boy full. So, what I've done, I've got this hose, connected onto a black hose into the lake up the top. I'm going to create a siphon. Big, prop, big shout out to Pops. He gave me the idea on how to do this. However, <coughs> he gave me the proper technical way, which I needed a split T. So you have a piece like that and a bit in the middle. So what you do is you'd fill the pipe with water from the top, bung this bottom end when it's full, come down, take your bottom bung off, the siphon will naturally start. However, I haven't got one of those T pieces, so I'm going to have to suck on the end of that and hope that it works. Let me get back to you in a second. Okay, so I've sucked and I've sucked and I've sucked and that's all that I'm getting at the end. So, what I think I've got is because this flexi pipe here is quite an old one, I think I've got a couple of little uh, air pockets in there somewhere. I'm just going to work my way down now and see if I can see anywhere that's bubbling out. If I see anywhere, I'm going to get me handy dandy little blue tape on it. The proper country boy way to fix it. Blue electrical tape. Let me snap back to you in a second though, once I've figured it out. Okay, so this overflow, or oh, sorry, this uh, siphon has been the bane of my life. Turns out the black piping that I was using, which is this one, has a few tiny little rip holes in it. So does the white one, hence me not being able to start the siphon. However, what I've done, I'll take you up the top in a second, I have rammed this 25mm blue water pipe into the overflow bit up there, so it comes under the ground, sticks out of this end here. What I've done now, is I've just dragged it over to here, so it's filling from the middle. And as you can see, if I get into the lake, It started to come in. It's gonna take a while, ladies and gentlemen, to fill this up. However, it's now Thursday. I'm hoping that by Sunday morning, I've at least got three quarters of the way up this bank here so I can actually get this video out in time. Now, one thing I have noticed, if you remember, all this is what we dragged out the lake, all that bushy weed kind of stuff. Yeah? A lot of it had died off, crisped up in the bottom of the lake. Look what I've found, ladies and gentlemen. And to say I'm fuming is an understatement. It started to grow back. We've got a little bit of grass here in the bottom which I don't particularly mind because it'll give the fry places to hide etc etc I don't really mind the oxygenating stuff because again it's going to give the fry chances to hide it's going to act as filtration etc etc it just means that when it comes time to net this lake out it is going to be an absolute nightmare yet again so seeking advice on that stuff now it's currently 10 to 8 on Thursday Gonna leave that running for till Sunday. Now, what I need to do is just show you what it's like up the top. In order to start it, I literally rammed it through, sucked on the end, because it's one solid pipe. Job was a good one. So that's where it currently is in the water at the moment. Could take longer than four days however i promise you by sunday however full it is that's where we're going to be ending the video in the meantime on saturday because obviously i'm just going to leave this filling all day tomorrow and i'll nip up on saturday what i need on saturday what i need to do is the reefer canal i need to get that bad boy out and i also here where it's already started to 
I say come back, I've just literally kicked this out a couple of weeks back. I actually need to dig down about a foot all the way across so I can put a piece of pipe in there to act as an overflow. I also need to do exactly the same. Well, tell a lie, I don't actually need to do it on these ones because obviously it's going to be covered over. But the big carp that are in here are doing well. And obviously the, uh, the little fish that we've got in on in here, again, doing well. So obviously this water really at the moment is perfect for raising on fry. Super green, loads and loads and loads of beneficial bacteria in there. But again, poly roof's got to go over the top. Now that it, the ground's all settled and leveled in, obviously this is literally going nowhere. So what we can do now is we can put the poly over, we can get in it, we can actually stake it down all the way so it doesn't blow off like that poly tunnel does over there. Daz has very, very kindly brought me a load of a um, brought me a load of decking down. So this Sunday in the morning, I'm going to be up here getting this on video. And then Sunday afternoon, we're up Daz's for a little bit of a barbecue. So again, I'll show you a little bit of footage of that. Um, but he's brought me a load of decking up for this corner pontoon bit up here as well. Obviously, it just makes it an awful lot easier to get around the side of the poly tunnel when there's going to be all decking up to sort of where my foot is here that we can actually obviously walk around on this corner piece here I've got to pour in a few braces of 6x2 uh, sorry 6x4 down here and down there and then some interlocking braces down there as well just to sort of take the bounce out but the digger is coming over in a couple of days so the digger will actually going to be leveling all this on and then we're going to be putting in a proper fence all the way off the bottom down and round this top bit here's all got to be mowed so i've just got to go over now and move out these big lumps of decking and stuff like that but other than that ladies and gentlemen let me snap back to you on sunday morning see you in a few days okay so it's been about 22 hours since the last update and i said i was going to snap back on sunday however obviously here is the uh, the latest bit in regards to sort of where we're actually up to at the moment so it's starting to fill still starting to clatter in uh, it started to reach the outside bank there now which is good the outside bank which is there which is good as well and obviously it started to fill down the back as well so fingers crossed when we come down sunday it's going to be looking really really well still plenty of flow coming out obviously water's looking really clear as well which is ice so yeah just a matter of uh Keeping on, keeping on. See how much water we can get out of here. And uh, jobs are good. Let me snap back to you on Sunday. Okay, so it's Saturday, it's glorious. The weather is booming, as you can tell from my big, bald, shiny head. The lake, ladies and gentlemen, is starting to get full. Let me spin you around. Okay, so this is after uh, probably 36 hours uh, of the lake falling. Uh, falling of the lake filling apologies i'm a million miles an hour because i'm super duper excited um but it, the the water's starting to reach the outside of the banks now all down here and obviously it's starting to locking down the back as well um so yeah it'd be super duper interesting to see exactly where we're at on sunday um but like i say i will do a snap back unfortunately it's not going to be absolutely brimmed full however obviously when we come back for part five you guys are going to be able to see us putting in the overflows in here, the overflows in uh, poly one, poly two, uh, and obviously the overflow over the back just there as well. But let me snap back to you tomorrow before we actually sign the video out and uh, show you where we've got up to. But I I'm happy. It's still coming out. It's still, uh, I say, clattering out. It's still coming out at a, uh, at a decent speed, which is good. Obviously, the water's looking uh, really clear as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see sort of how clear we can keep that going. One thing I do need though, guys, by the way, has anybody got any advice, any tips on how to actually aerate the lake? Obviously, I know we want to run it solar down the back. Um, I know Daniel Tate uh, is an absolute wizard when it comes to uh, all things electrics and electronics and stuff. So he's volunteered to sort of help give me some help and advice in regards to what I actually need to get to build the solar element to this. Um, but for the time being, I need to figure out 
how I'm going to aerate the lake so I can let Daniel know what wattage etc is going to be put through uh, for the polytunnels, the canal and obviously the lake as well. Um, so yeah, if anybody's got any tips, any know-how on how to aerate a pond lake, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'll send you my mobile number, we can have a bit of a chinwag and a chat. Um, but yeah, let me snap back to you tomorrow. Okay, so it's Sunday as promised. The lake is looking an awful lot more full now. Let me spin you around there and just show you how much we've actually drained out the top lake. So the blue pipe there is still in the water. Obviously a considerable amount has started to come down now. Can definitely tell by how much the uh, the trees actually overhang now. But I reckon another three, four more days and jobs are good. In. However, let me take you down and show you the lake. Let me show you what I have to contend with. So this wire here is electrifiers. I have to try and stand over it without zapping me nether regions. For those of you that are curious, yes, yes, I have got it wrong numerous times and zapped my nether regions. But, lake's starting to fill now. Obviously slowly but surely working its way backwards. Jetty's looking phenomenal, Polly's looking phenomenal. The reef canal's looking really good. Obviously, I'd love to be able to sit here and show you it completely full. However, you know how it is, it's a work in progress. I reckon we've got about another five, six days left on filling this up. Obviously, the, the beauty is some of, obviously some of the green shoots here. The ball rushes are already starting to come through, which is fantastic. Natural filtration, going to be incredible. As I mentioned in the previous shot, let me know if you've got any ideas and tips and tricks on how to aerate this bad boy. Um, join us for part five next week, which is going to be finishing off the corner jetty over the back, putting in the overflows, putting on top of the green polys, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, I've got an M60 five to six inch fish that we're going to overwinter in one of the polys. Um, but yeah, it's coming, people. Super excited. Can't wait to share this journey with you all. Obviously, it's been a battle to try and get this old school overflow system coming in, but you know what? It's working. Uh, it's a slow process, but you know what? It's free. It's not cost us anything. We're, we're using Mother Nature. We're using gravity to, to actually get this done. And that's one thing I'm super excited for with this project is to get the solar going. So everything's self-sufficient. No carbon footprint on there. I'm going big in doing things natural now and using mother nature to help hence having the koi farm to be able to grow a load of koi fry on and stuff like that make sure you follow me on social media facebook and twitter is at the balding reefer instagram slightly different ladies and gentlemen that's at the dot balding dot reefer however stay safe stay sane most importantly people stay happy balding reefer out